In this there video, we're going to look at making some formic acid written as CH2O2 or HCOOH. Formic acid is also known as methanoic acid. Formic acid was first isolated in 1671 by English naturalist John Ray, and he distilled it from a mass of crushed ants. Now talk about an idea. I wrote this ant up here because most people have heard of formic acid from documentaries on ants, but ants make it entirely different than we do in a lab. Ants start uh, making formic acid from the amino acids alserine and glycine and through a process of metabolism some wood ants can make a percentage of formic acid up to 80 percent now the azeotropic mixture of uh, formic acid done in a lab is somewhere between 75 and 77 percent so up to 80 percent is really unbelievable almost they use it for defense you can imagine how good that would work uh, and how bad that would burn um, but also for hygiene and cleaning in and around uh, their nests and also um, their unborn babies uh, just to keep the bacteria and the fungi to a minimum. Formic acid was isolated using only chemicals, no ants involved, in 1855 by Marceline Berthelot, a French chemist. Formic acid is found in nature as one of the most prevalent acids and especially amongst insects, ants, bees, wasps, nettles, and even some caterpillars. The boiling point for pure formic acid is 100.8 degrees Celsius, very close to water, and the freezing point is a negative 8.4 degrees Celsius. There are 800,000 tons made per year for industry for all sorts of things. Typically in a lab, you use oxalic acid and glycerin, aka glycerol. I'll be using these interchangeably, I'm sure, throughout this entire video, just to get used to the fact that they are exactly the same thing. Just oxalic acid is formic acid plus a carbon dioxide. And normally, when you heat something like this, you can get rid of the carbon dioxide and you have formic acid. But you can't just heat the oxalic acid in this situation because oxalic acid breaks down before you can form formic acid when you heat it, and it breaks down into carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. Glycerin gives a stable, high boiling point medium that prevents the oxalic acid from breaking down into the components I mentioned earlier. And if you're gonna do just a single distillation to make your formic acid, the closer to an anhydrous glycerin, meaning less water, will give you a higher percentage yield of formic acid. In our materials, we're gonna start with oxalic acid dihydrate, 100 grams, and glycerin 100 milliliters, I will be using an anhydrous form of glycerin just to limit the water from the beginning. Going over the reaction next, um, and the reaction really is gonna tell the whole story of uh, how this experiment's gonna proceed here. So we're gonna start with this glycerin here, which are these multiple carbon bonded molecules on the end here. And we're gonna mix with that, add oxalic acid, which is a single bonded carbon with the OOH groups. And earlier I mentioned that oxalic acid is really formic acid plus COO2 or carbon dioxide. So if we look at the very end here, we're going to be producing formic acid, and that's COOH with one H on the end here. So we'll go back here, and we got rid of the COO, which is CO2, we'd have HCOOH, which is formic acid, as we see. So that's how that actually looks, I guess. So we're going to mix these two together, and then we're going to heat it. We're first going to lose some water. We're going to form glycerol monooxalate. We're going to continue to heat it. Then we're going to lose some carbon dioxide, and we're going to form glycerol monoformate. Now at this point, you're kind of stuck because you've gotten rid of your water and your carbon dioxide, but now you need to add water back into the system to actually complete the reaction. So when you add water back in the system, you reform your glycerin that you started with, but this time you have your formic acid and of course some water will be formed with that because we're not producing pure formic acid. When we add water here, it can be done uh, two different ways. Number one is you could pour distilled water in there, the appropriate amount. Or what happens, what you can do is add more oxalic acid dihydrate because it's a dihydrate. And when you add more of that oxalic acid dihydrate in, you're starting from here and you're pushing this through. But the water actually comes off and instead of losing it, you end up adding it right away to the end of this reaction because what you have in the bottom of your flask is glycerol monoformate. So that water gets immediately used to produce glycerin and formic acid, which gets distilled over. And then you can continue to add more of your oxalic acid dihydrate because it, again, provides the water to produce glycerol monoformate, all the while the oxalic acid portion is starting over in the beginning here and going through this process here. So you can continue to do this over and over again. Eventually, the glycerin you started with will break down and get full of all kinds of stuff and cloudy and messy. Sometimes it turns black from impurities. So you can only go so far. But in theory, you go forever doing this, uh, producing formic acid continually just by adding more oxalic acid back into your glycerin because the glycerin is reformed. When we go through heating this, the temperature is going to be between 105 and 120, and that's around the temperature where you start to get the higher percentages of formic acid distilled over. If you just mixed 
um, anhydrous oxalic acid, which you can make, and anhydrous glycerin, you would not get formic acid production until around 130 to 140 degrees Celsius. By, but by using some with a little water, you bring the boiling point down, which makes the experiment safer. In our methods here, to start, we're going to have a simple distillation set up. So 500 milliliter round bottom flask, but I'm going to use a triple neck. The top one, of course, will be used uh, for the distill head here and the thermometer. And then on the side here, I'll have a second thermometer that will go down into this mix of glycerol and uh, oxalic acid, which will be heated. And that's where we want to monitor the temperature between 105 and 120 is actually inside of the mix right here. Uh, on the third opening here, I'm going to have a funnel and that'll be to add the additional oxalic acid as we go. But I'll, of course, be swapping that out with a glass stopper because once we add the oxalic acid, we need to seal it back up. So once we've distilled over what we can at these temperatures, we'll have our formic acid and water uh, collecting down here. The first run, we're going to throw this out because we're getting rid of all the carbon dioxide and water we can. But on the second, third, and et cetera runs, uh, we're going to save it, the formic acid and the water. And the carbon dioxide will be released safely in the atmosphere. I'm going to run my uh, fume hood just for whatever case, I guess, to suck this up and, and just to be extra safe. Because as a side note here, you can produce acrolein, which is a type of a gas. It's a little bit toxic. It, it is just something you don't want to breathe in. Um, and you can also produce allyl alcohols within the solutions themselves. Both of these come out of solution before you hit 105 degrees Celsius. So if you hit 105 degrees Celsius and you, nothing's come over, you know that you're safe, that you haven't brought over any of these impurities. Um, of course, the gas you wouldn't notice anyways, but the allyl alcohols, you definitely see them dripping here. So to go through this step by step, first add the glycerin, second add the oxalic acid that's down here, heat the mix, monitor the temperature, keep it right there. This releases the H2O and carbon dioxide, which we went over up here, releasing the water here and the carbon dioxide right here. And then you want to heat this until, the, until it stops bubbling. And that's because no more carbon dioxide is being produced. So when this calms down, in spite of having enough heat, you know that you're done with that particular round and it's time to add more oxalic acid. At this point, as I mentioned earlier, the first one we're going to toss and then we need to cool it every time before we add more oxalic acid. Each time we add the oxalic acid, it'll be another 100 grams and we'll save the distillate every time. So there's no reason to swap out this end because it will just keep dropping in more formic acid and water that comes over. So this will build with every oxalic acid that we add over here. I plan on adding 100 grams of oxalic acid after the first run four times. But the last run, because we're not adding oxalic acid, we don't have water to put back in the system to get this last step completed. We'll add 50 milliliters of distilled water to it in here instead of the oxalic acid, again, to make the step move forward right here. The last step we'll do is change this into a fractional distillation. So there will be a fractional distillation column here, of course, and then all of this will be raised up a little bit higher. And as we collect what comes over, because we're not getting pure oxalic acid, which again, the boiling point is 100.8. We're not going to be getting that. At 100 degrees, we'll be getting water, mostly water over here. So we're going to toss everything that's less than or equal to 100 degrees Celsius. But as soon as it jumps up to 101 and above, I'm going to start collecting it in a flask. Again, this is fractionally uh, distillate, distilled over here. And I'm going to collect that in a flask until the temperature jumps again. And I'll collect that in another flask. And if it jumps again, I'll collect that in another flask. Meaning because I want to say the highest percentage of formic acid, I do not want it to all get mixed in possibly with the lower percentages if I just leave one flask there. I think that makes sense. Okay, that's a wrap. Let's go ahead and start making our formic acid. 100 grams of oxalic acid dihydrite pre-weighed. 100 milliliters of anhydrous glycerol or glycerin pre-measured. review of the setup before we start. So basically it's a distillation setup that should kind of look similar to the sketch I did. So we have a round bottom flask here with three necks. There's two thermometers. This one right here, which will be measuring the temperature of the mix down here of oxalic acid and glycerol. And then this one up here, which will be used when we're near the end of the experiment and we're trying to distill the purest form of formic acid that we can. This one's open here with the funnel because that's where I'll be adding additional oxalic acid as we go and swapping that out with that of course, when we're running the actual distillation. And then on this end right here, we have a flask to collect our formic acid and some water, of course, will always be there. But this is open because we're producing carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide, of course, will expand. It has to stay open like that. And I'll be running my fume hood the whole time. So we're all set up here and ready to go. Adding 100 milliliters of glycerin, also glycerol. Adding the 100 grams of oxalic acid. Mm -hmm. 
Again, the step here is to get rid of the water and carbon dioxide. The water will come off first, then the carbon dioxide. The temperature right now on the thermometer, slightly inside the glycerin there, is 23 degrees Celsius. I'm going to turn the heat on now. And as this heats up, of course, the oxalic acid and the glycerin will start to mix pretty well. We're coming up on the 105 degrees Celsius mark there. I hope you can see that. It's time to slow down the heating a bit just to keep it in the safe range. Just started to get some water dripping over here. There's a small amount of formic acid in there, of course, but again, this first step with the first 100 grams of oxalic acid is just to get rid of as much water and carbon dioxide as we can. The temperature's at 110 degrees Celsius and it's been holding steady right there. This has been running about an hour now and the temperature is the same. In fact, it's crept up a little bit. It's at about 115 right now. I'm keeping a close eye on that, but in spite of the uh, higher temperature, we're getting less and less boiling is what it looks like, which is good because as the water and carbon dioxide leaves the solution here, the bubbling should come almost to a complete stop, which is when we know we're at the end. The temperature is at about 105 degrees Celsius right now. It was approaching 120, so I dropped it about 11, 12 degrees just to be extra safe, but this is good at 105 degrees Celsius, and at that temperature, we've got almost nothing happening down here. So I'm pretty sure that this is done here. What we're gonna do next is add another 100 grams of the oxalic acid, and at that point, we'll start collecting the formic acid that'll be produced. On this end, there is some uh, liquid in here, not much. I calculated how much water would come out of just the oxalic acid dihydrate and the anhydrous uh, glycerin, and it turns out to be about 29 milliliters. So it looks like we got about just that in there, not much at all which uh, actually works out well. We're gonna dump this and of course, as I just said, collect whatever comes over next. Before we add the next batch of 100 grams of oxalic acid dihydride, it needed to cool down and it is right now at around 24 degrees Celsius. So let's do that. The solution on the bottom is glycerol monoformate. It just needs some water to turn back into formic acid and glycerin, or glycerol. So the water that comes from the oxalic acid dihydrate that we just added is going to do that. And as it forms formic acid and glycerol, the new glycerol will combine with the oxalic acid we just added and start the whole process again to form more glycerol monoformate. All set to go here, turn on the heat. The second time through, we've got good boiling again up here, and we're at around 108, 109 degrees Celsius, so that's good also. And then if we jump way over here, we've already started collecting our formic acid that we're going to keep this time. It's been running an hour and a half now. You can see by the gap there how much liquid we've lost on this end as this has been heating again the second round of the oxalic acid. And we're at about 116 degrees Celsius, less liquid with the same heat. Yeah, it's gonna raise the temperature, but I'm watching that. I might drop it again uh, really soon. And on this end again, we're having pretty good results here. This is definitely more than we got last time. Makes sense. We should get more this time. Our temperature is right around 110 degrees Celsius. And down here, again, there's barely anything happening. So we're gonna stop this, let it cool down, and add some more oxalic acid. The temperature has dropped back down to about 27 degrees Celsius, which is fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, again, our second oxalic acid for getting formic acid, and our third overall. Once again, turning the heat on. You've seen this already a couple times, so I'm gonna move the camera and we'll watch something different. The temperature is at about 110 degrees Celsius there, and down here, once again, not very much is happening. Our final volume over here is 200 milliliters, and now we have to distill this fractionally so we can get a higher percentage of formic acid. That's our next step. Transferring the formic acid and water solution into a brand new 500 milliliter round bottom flask in preparation for our fractional distillation. A quick look at the setup here because it's just too tall and big to get in the video all at one time. So there's a solution we just poured in. We'll come up to our fractional distillation column, up to the distillation head here with a thermometer, etc. This is all very standard, of course. And then across our cooling tube and into this flask. Turning on the heat. Our solution has come to a nice boil there. I covered the column with aluminum foil just to help heat it a bit. 
We are holding at exactly 100 degrees Celsius there. And on this end, we've collected about 50 milliliters. I'm suspecting within the next 50 milliliters, we'll be swapping this out for the new flask down there. We just jumped to 101 degrees Celsius, so that's our cue to go ahead and swap that out, which I'm gonna do right now. The temperature has jumped up to 105 degrees Celsius, so I swapped out the flask one more time. So this will be the purest form of formic acid in this particular flask. The temperature's at 105 degrees Celsius there. We are boiling away just the last little bit of solution right here, and up here we have our highest concentration of formic acid. Here are the three flasks we just collected doing the fractional distillation. The one on the left here, of course, is just mostly water. The second one, which was collected between 101 and 104 degrees Celsius right here, which is probably about a 40 to 50 percent solution of formic acid. And this last one, which was collected at 105 degrees Celsius plus, which is the closest to the 77 percent azeotropic mixture of formic acid. This is what I'm definitely going to keep for, fu for future experiments. Let me keep this. I'm not sure if I have a definite use for it, but you never know. And of course, the water we're going to toss.